<laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. So thanks for, uh, for having me. I'm going to take a slightly different tack on what to do with your money. Uh, you can decide later which one you'd like to uh, adopt yourself, but I'll give you some reasons why you might do something other than just steal it uh, from other people, although that might be not a bad thing to do either. So first, let's just take a minute to ponder this old uh, truism that isn't necessarily a truism. And it's this idea that resonates with a lot of us that, and we were told that when we were kids, that money can't buy happiness. And we kind of know that because sometimes, you know, I was a graduate student for a long time and I was broke. And now I'm a professor, so I'm vaguely broke, but not as broke. But I'm not really any, my life's a little bit easier, but I'm not really any happier. So we kind of all know money doesn't make us that much happier. It makes our lives a bit easier, but it's not as though when our salary doubles, for example, that we get twice as happy. We don't wake up every day, jump out of bed and run around because our siblings are the same irritating people, our friends are irritating, <laughs> somebody's still got to pick people up at this time, and there's traffic. So sometimes we think money's going to make us a lot happier, but it, but it doesn't necessarily. But I think, actually, that money can make you happier. And the real thing is, actually, if this works or not, there you go, is that, in fact, what, what we're doing wrong is we're not spending it in the right way. So if you think about what you do when you get more money, you usually buy stuff, and you buy a lot of stuff. And you buy a lot of stuff you don't even need. So you say, oh, great, I got a bigger uh, salary. So what I'm going to do now is buy a bigger apartment. And then you get a bigger salary, and you say, now I'm going to buy a house. And then a bigger one, and you say, now I'm going to buy a bigger house. And we often see people, when we, when we talk to wealthy people who are very unhappy, they say I ha they have an enormous house. They have six guest bedrooms, and they have no friends. So it's unclear who the guest bedrooms are for, and they're divorced, and their kids don't talk to them. So think about when you have money, you buy these things, because it seems like that's what money is for. But in fact, it's not necessarily the case that that's what you should use money for, even when you get more of it. Um, thanks, Dan. So we had uh, a, a, some media coverage of, of some of our research a while ago, and there was an article about does, does uh, winning the lottery make people happier? And the point of the article was to say that no, it does not, actually. So they interviewed lottery winners who said, you know what, my life is still very difficult. Uh, it didn't really change my life that much. And then weirdly in the comments, instantly people stopped talking about how money can't make you happier. And what people started talking about was what they would do if they won the lottery. <laughs> that was the first thing that came to their mind. Lottery winnings, you know what I would do. So uh, the first thing one of them did was this. When I win, I'm going to buy my own little mountain and have a little house on top. How about this person? This is my favorite person in the world. This is someone just <laughs> typing in. I would fill a big bathtub with money and get in the tub while smoking a big fat cigar and sipping a glass of champagne. That sounds pretty good, actually, let's be honest. Then I'd have a picture taken, a little weird, but OK, and dozens of glossies made, weirder. Then this is the saddest part, I think. Anyone begging for money or trying to extort from me would receive a copy of the picture <laughs> and nothing else. <laughs> Evil. You win the lottery, and what you do is you buy yourself a little house by yourself on a mountain with nobody else, or you taunt people <laughs> with, with the money that, that you won. And uh, we wanted to say, you know what, maybe that's not the right thing to do with, with your money. And we said, I wonder what would happen if instead of letting people do the stuff they usually do, like buy a house on a mountain and things like that, what if we forced people to do something different with it? So even if you think, you know what I'm going to do with it is buy something, what if I made you one day spend it in a different way? And we said, what would be an interesting way to make people spend their money that they don't usually spend it? And the answer that we came up with was, why don't we make them give it away? Maybe that will actually make them happier and be more meaningful than keeping it themselves. And it was a strong test, because when you give money away, you're poorer. So you'd think, well, that's not going to work very well, because then I'm going to have less money, and I'll be very unhappy, and I'll be back to where I was before when I was a broke grad student. We thought maybe if we did it to people, the act of giving is such a powerful human uh, behavior, and it's so deeply ingrained in us to behave in that way, that we might see people getting huge benefits uh, from this. So I'll talk about uh, some studies that, that we've run uh, in, in this domain. The first one was the first one was uh, we went out uh, on a beautiful Vancouver morning, which, which there aren't too many of, but it wasn't raining uh, this morning. And um, we basically uh, went around to undergrads on campus with envelopes filled with cash. 
So I'd walk up to you and say, would you like to be in an experiment today? And you'd say, maybe you would say yes. Unless you were mad, you'd say no. And if they said yes, we'd say, how happy are you right now on some scale? And people say, which is an amazing thing, by the way, if you say, how happy are you from 1 to 10? People think for a quarter of a second and say 5 or 7, <laughs> even though surely there's more inputs to that than a quarter of a second. But that's a whole other, whole other issue. So people say, yes, we say, how happy are you? And they say, oh, here's my number. And then we say, here's an envelope. And in the envelope is a slip of paper that says, by 5 PM today, some people got one that said, spend this money on a bill and expense or a gift for yourself. In other words, spend money the way you usually do. And other people, we had a little slip of paper that said, by 5 o'clock today, basically spend it on somebody else. Spend it on a friend, on a gift for someone, or, or charitable giving, or something like that. And we also varied how much money we put in the envelope. So some people got these, as, this is Canadian money, if, you, if it looks like Monopoly money. So <laughs> Canada is a real country that is to the north of us. <laughs> And they have actual money. I didn't know it until we started this research. So some people got $5 and were told to do one of those things. And some people got $20 and were told to do one of those things. Then we called them up at night and said, hey, how happy do you feel? And then we said, what'd you do with the money? So what did people do with the money? These are undergrads, remember? So, uh, and some of them were women. So when people bought things for themselves, they bought little earrings and little makeup and things like that. When people bought for other people, they bought, one woman bought um, a little stuffed animal for her brother. Uh, other people gave money to homeless people, actually, uh, in the street. They would give them the five or give them the 20. Tons of people, there's an insight in this research that's amazing, which is that if you give an undergrad $5, they envision coffee. It's like a, it looks like coffee to them, and they run to Starbucks and spend it <laughs> immediately. But the difference is that when it's for yourself, you buy yourself a coffee. And what they did was, and it's so subtle, they went and bought a coffee. Everything's the same, but they gave it to someone instead of themselves. You don't get to drink the coffee now, but you got to do something really nice for somebody else. And what we see at the end of the day when we call them back is the personal people, you don't get less happy if you bought yourself some earrings, but you don't get any happier. It doesn't really do much. You feel good when you buy it, and then by the evening, it's just some more makeup. It's just some earrings. It doesn't really do anything. These people who spent on other people got happier, and they got a lot happier. Uh, even if they bought a coffee or something boring, giving away made them happier. Uh, than, than spending on themselves. And the amount of money doesn't matter. So getting five, you'd think if you get $20, you'd be happier than if you get $5. It matters a very tiny bit, but what really matters is, did you spend money on yourself? And nothing much happens to you if you do, but if you spent that money on somebody else, you actually get a lot happier. Next thing we did was say, you know what? These are undergrads. This is uh, Vancouver. It's not the most representative place in the world. They're pretty wealthy. They're pretty affluent. Does this, is this true everywhere? Or is it only wealthy people who can get happy from giving money uh, away? So we went, obviously, to Uganda, which is um, also a real country, which is uh, somewhere in the south of something or other. You may have heard of it uh, from time to time. And we did a similar experiment. We give people $20 uh, Canadian, or we give them the equivalent amount in spending money in uh, Uganda. And then we ask them again, same thing. How happy are you about this, and, and what did you spend it on? And here we start to see some really interesting similarities between these two cultures. So Uganda is actually quite a different nation than Canada, if you can imagine in your head. Here is a guy that, that spent money on somebody else in Uganda, OK? I called a girl I wish to love. I think he means he's in love with her, not like he wants to love her in a threatening way. We went to this local hangout, and I basically I bought her dinner and a soda. And then he says, but I, however, I did not achieve this girl uh, up until now. So he is doing a nice thing for this woman, but he uh, hasn't quite gotten there yet. Here's a guy from Canada. Uh, I took my girlfriend out for dinner at a local restaurant. We went to a movie, which was so bad we left, and then went back to her room for, and unfortunately, all he got was cake, <laughs> which is sad. But you can see, I mean, totally different cultures, same exact impulse. Here's some money. I'll spend it on my girlfriend. People spend it on their siblings. They spend it on other people. Then you see some amazing differences, though. So Uganda is actually a very poor country, obviously, compared to Canada. Look at these examples here. This is a woman from Canada who basically says uh, that we gave her money. And she said, basically, um, I went to the mall and got a scarf, which is a nice thing to do, but it's a pretty common, easy behavior. Read this one. This is a woman from uh, Uganda. As you can imagine, we don't see many like this in Canada. So, so most people who get money and spend it on other people in Canada, it's frivolous in some sense. They buy a nice gift something like that. Many of them in Uganda were a medical need or some other need that was really salient and really important. And this money made a huge difference in their lives uh, as well. But the amazing thing is, when we look at how happy they are, they're just as happy. 
So whether you buy somebody a scarf in Canada or needed medicine in Uganda, spending money on yourself doesn't do anything for you, and spending money on other people does it for you, whether you're rich or poor, whether you're from Canada or Uganda. Anytime we give people money to spend on other people, they get happier. Anytime they spend it on themselves, not much happens. If you're not convinced by Uganda being different enough, I'll tell you another uh, survey uh, that we did in 136 countries all over the world. And we asked people two questions. One question is, how happy are you? And another question is, have you donated any money to charity recently? And we can look to see if people who donate money to charity are happier than people who don't. And we can control for their income and all other kinds of things we'd want to control for. Is there a basic relationship everywhere in the world between spending money on other people uh, and being a happier person. I'm going to show you a map of the world. Green means that there's a positive relationship between spending money on other people and happiness. Red means that there's a negative relationship between spending money on other people and happiness. And as you can see, the world is crazily green. So we have data from all of these countries uh, all over the world. There are a couple of red and pinkish countries, uh, but almost everywhere in the world we can see evidence that when you spend money on other people, uh, you get happy. I know you're all wondering what that country is, and I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> you can look it up later. But some countries that you'd think would not have this relationship, for example, that is not Rwanda, but Rwanda is very close. Rwanda, there's a very positive relationship between spending money on other people and being a happier person. Anywhere we look in the world, we almost always see evidence that it's better to spend your money on others than to keep it for yourself. So where else could we kind of look for, for evidence that spending money on other people makes you happier? Well, we thought what we'd do is go into companies. So you know that in companies you often get bonuses and things like this. They say, thanks for working so hard. Here's $100. Here's $1,000. If you meet the sales goal, we'll give you more money. We'll give you less money. We said, imagine if an organization said to their employees, here's some money, but it's not for you. What you have to do with this money is buy him a present, one of your coworkers. And then to other people, I said, you know what? You need to buy her a present. And we made everyone buy weird presents for each other in the workplace as opposed to giving other people $15 and they could do whatever they wanted with it. So we got some, um, we've done this in a number of domains, but we got some um, sales teams in Belgium who are pharmaceutical sales reps, and we did exactly this, and they were horrified. So it's incredibly awkward to have to buy a present for your coworker if, you don't, if you're not really friends with them. It's, you know, what do you buy them, like a plant or something? They didn't want to do it. And what they wanted was the money for themselves. They said, why are you making us why are you giving us a bonus, but making me give it away instead of letting me buy whatever I want? Real resistance to doing it. Except when we did it, they actually loved it. So the reason there's a pinata there, which may be a little bit surprising, is one team pooled their money and bought a pinata for the workplace and strung it up one morning, and they all smashed the pinata down and grabbed the candy and things like that. Totally changed the environment for just a very small amount of money. And we can look to see over time, do the sales teams that did that get better at their job? Do they become a better team? Do they help each other more? Do they give each other advice? And it turns out that they do. They show up for meetings more. There's more mentoring of junior people by senior people. And I can tell you that in one experiment that we did, if we look at the return on the investment, so uh, in one experiment we had people, I'll give you 15 euro and you spend it on yourself. And when I do that, and when I give employees that bonus, the company gets back four and a half. So they lose money because it doesn't change your behavior at all. You say, thanks for the money. You put it in your pocket. I'm going to do exactly what I was doing before. What about if I say, here's 15 euro for you. You spend it on her. How well did those teams do over time? Enormously well. There's a huge return on this. People get actually better at selling and better at supporting each other. And we see it over and over again when we go into companies. Really tiny change, really tiny amount of money. 15 euro is very, these are salespeople who make a good salary. It really changes the dynamic among teams. The last domain I'll show you that we've investigated, you're probably thinking, but why didn't they try it with dodgeball teams? <laughs> so we did. It came up many, many times from many different people said, what about dodgeball, dodgeball this, dodgeball that. Surely it works with dodgeball. I'm not, no, no. So we infiltrated dodgeball teams, and we did the exact same thing. So imagine being on a dodgeball team, and we give some of you money, and we say, here, here's some money. Go spend it on yourself. Or being on a dodgeball team where we say, here's some money. Spend it on your teammates. We see the exact same things. If you look at their winning percentage after we do this, the teams that got money to spend on themselves, they won 50% of their games before because they're average. They win 50% after because they're average. Teams that we allow to spend money on each other, they go from winning 50% of their games to winning 80% of their games. And a lot of it is because they, sh you know when, you, when you're doing intramural sports, which many of you have done, and, and it's raining and you don't feel like going, or maybe you just feel a little sick or you're tired, so you forfeit all the time? These teams never forfeit. 
they like each other. So they said, gee, I don't want to let Ted down. I better go to, not Ted, the conference. Let's go with, <laughs> let's go with Tim. I don't want to let Tim down. I'm going to show up for the game. And they win the league championship, actually, in, in the one time that we did this with uh, uh, dodgeball teams, which is pretty amusing. That's not a real dodgeball team, by the way. We didn't actually use those people. So um, I think, um, just to conclude, I think uh, sometimes when I say that you're not spending it right, I think people think I'm going to say you should spend it on different kinds of products or something. You know, if you bought a different kind of house, that would make you happier than the house you buy. And I think what we really are trying to show in all of this research is you're thinking about it the wrong way, which is that if you use all of your money to buy stuff for you or for people you know directly, it's not a bad thing to do and it doesn't make you less happy, but you're leaving a huge amount of happiness on the table by not giving more of it away. Not all of your income, you don't need to give everything you have away, but the idea is basically if you give some away, we can actually show, and it sounds cynical, but we can actually show that giving money away allows you to buy more happiness. Thank you. A couple of questions. So what was the name of the actress that said if you don't think that money can buy happiness, you don't know where to go shopping? I'm not sure. So um, is, there anything, is there anything about happiness that it is about shopping? I mean, can you improve that at all? Or yeah. Yes, actually. So, so if you are determined to spend money on yourself, as I know many of you are, <laughs> including me, that's why I'm dressed so very well. Uh, and this is a fake beard that I have paid for. And it didn't work very well. Somebody else got it for you. Exactly, yeah. The, the thing to do is buy experiences. So if you're going to spend money on yourself, don't buy stuff. Buy activities, buy events, buy experiences. They're much richer. You often do them with other people, so you have social contact during them. And, and experiences, and you all know this because we all do it, they stick in your mind mm -hmm. forever. So if you have an amazing vacation 30 years ago, or you went to this amazing restaurant 10 years ago, the, the happiness you get from those memories is so large that it far outweighs a TV on your wall that looks great, but it doesn't really give you that same sense of meaning and satisfaction. And so, so another question is, when we think about experiences, the, often the happiness before, the happiness during, and the happiness after. So, Let's say vacation, uh, we have an anticipation of going into vacation before, we think about how wonderful it will be, then we have the actual happiness with vacation, then we have the actual memory of it after the fact. Mm -hmm. So if you think about these three types of utilities, what, which type of them is uh, mostly helped when you give money to other people? So the, the, anticipation, the anticipation of buying things for yourself is quite high. So if you're going to get a new flat screen TV, you're very excited about getting it. The, the anticipation of giving money to other people is not that great. It doesn't feel that great to think, God, I could have had a TV, but instead I'm going to give it to this bozo over there instead of spending it on myself. The experience of buying things for yourself is nice. So you get a, when you buy earrings for yourself, you feel good for a moment, but it goes away very, very quickly. The experience of giving money to other people feels good in the moment, and that lasts much longer. So over the course of a day or over the course of a week, it stays. And then the biggest difference is in the memory of it, you have no idea what you had for lunch. You bought yourself a sandwich today. I bet you don't even remember what kind of sandwich it was. And you certainly don't remember yesterday's or the day before's. When you buy things for other people, you remember them much better. So you have meaning and coherence and all of these words that sound a little bit frou-frou, but they're really important for us to be happy in our lives. So the net-net on giving uh, instead of spending on yourself across all of those types is much higher when you give money away than when you keep it for yourself. So the last question is, you know, a lot of it is about the fact that people don't have the right intuition about what would make them happier. How come, how come we don't have that intuition? How come that we don't just know this? Yeah, I, well, the first thing I should say is, so sometimes we give people the choice. So imagine I said, hey, would you like $50 for yourself, or would you like $50 that I'm going to make you donate to charity? <laughs> people say, I'll take the $50 for myself. And you say, well, what are you going to do with it? And they say, well, the reason I'm taking it is because what I'll do now is I'll spend some of it on myself and I'll give some of it to charity. <laughs> Except then we can call them later and say, hey, remember that $50 we gave you last week? What'd you do with it? And awkward pause. <laughs> and they say, oh, I put it in the bank or I spent it on myself or I had dinner. So, oh, what about the charity thing? Oh, yeah, I forgot I didn't have the charity thing, something like that. So, so people have the very strong intuition that they should get the money for themselves and then decide what to do with it. M my guess is that the, the pain, it's a little bit related to your earlier question, but the pain of parting with the money 
in, we think that the pain of giving it away is so bad instead of spending it on ourselves that we think I'm going to spend it on myself because I know that will feel good. And we don't do it often enough to realize, in fact, that it feels very good uh, to give money away, especially to causes that we care about or people that we care about. It's an act that really has a big impact on people. And you see people, when they give, feeling good about it even though they often think, even the next day, I don't want to do it again. It's, it's too difficult to do again. So we're trying actually to train people to be givers. So, so one idea is to make you give money to charity. And right after you do it and you're feeling that kind of warm glow, say, by the way, would you like to sign up to give money to charity every month? So can we turn people into givers by reminding them that it feels kind of nice to give and then change their happiness over time? We're doing that research right now. Very good. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks, Dan.